смотри, 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 идет куда? Good day. Um, in the last week there have been two very large explosions which have appeared on videos that have been published on the internet. Um, the most recent one was I think yesterday which was an explosion in Lebanon in a place called Jabar which is uh, in southern Lebanon some distance from Beirut. Uh, and the, the, the earlier one was at Toropets, which is in uh, Russia, some 200 kilometers from the Latvian border, east of the Latvian border. And both of these uh, explosions look very like nuclear explosions. I mean, I've seen a lot of nuclear explosions as a result of my work for the nuclear test veterans which I carried out for many years, from about 2007. And in fact, I'm still carrying out some expert witness work for the nuclear test veterans. So I've been asked by lots of people to comment, because a lot of people said, oh, these are nuclear explosions, and other people afterwards said, no, they aren't nuclear explosions, it's not, it's not possible, and so forth. So here's my take on both of these. Um, first of all, I have to bring you back to some work that I did previously on a new nuclear weapon, one that uses cold fusion and which I've called red mercury. It, it essentially is a fusion weapon, that is to say, it, do, it doesn't have a fission primer, it does thermonuclear explosion just on the basis of containing uh, deuterium in uranium. So, so effectively you have uranium small amount of uranium and you dissolve deuterium inside it at a temperature of about 300 degrees and when you compress it you get a, a reaction which is essentially a nu nuclear reaction, a thermonuclear reaction, you get fusion the uh, deuterium turns into helium-4, helium-3 and produces neutrons and a very large explosion for the size of the bomb so you can call it a mini-nuke in fact, the Americans have been talking about having mini-nukes for many, many years. But you need to know that in order to have a nuke at all, you have to have a fission, a f uh, to have fission at all, you have to have a critical mass. But in this system, you don't need to have a critical mass, because it works quite differently. It cuts out the fissions altogether. And therefore, it doesn't have fallout, you see. This is the most important point here. When, when, a, when a fission bomb explodes, like Hiroshima, or all of the bombs that were exploded during the nuclear tests in the 1960s, you get fission fallout isotopes like cesium-137 and strontium-90. Those are the longer-lived ones. You also get plutonium-239 and uh, a lot of very short-lived uh, nuclides. That, by short-lived, I mean a few years, or uh, and in fact most of them a few weeks. So long ago we found enriched uranium in a crater in uh, Lebanon, 2006 this was, and then later on we found enriched uranium in Gaza, we found it in Fallujah, and people found it in S Serbia, in, uh, in the Balkans. So we're talking about a new type of nuclear weapon. Now the point about this nuclear weapon, as I have just said, is it does not produce fission product fallout. So in other words, it won't be detected by all of these systems of detection that are placed all around the world to check out whether somebody is doing nuclear tests. And this is what the IAEA refer to when they're interested in seeing if people have done a nuclear test. Because small amounts of these radionuclides you can detect. 
and laboratories can detect them and there are laboratories all over the world looking for these things and if they don't find them the assumption is there is no nuclear explosion but my point is and this is very important is that a nuclear explosion has been developed which doesn't produce fallout so when you come along afterwards as many people have on on the internet recently and said Oh, the, although the Lebanese bomb in Jabal looks like a nuclear uh, explosion, it isn't one because we haven't found any radioactive fallout. And the same with the Torre Pets explosion, which to me is clearly a nuclear explosion. But it doesn't produce radioactive fallout. And in fact, the people who were evacuated from the town, uh, Torre Pets town, there are 11,000 people live there, so that's the population, were let back in again. Now, as far as that that one is concerned, the bunkers were were said to be the, the concrete bunkers under which they can, kept all the munitions were said to be proof against a nuclear attack. So the arguments that the that the that the actual bunker went up and all of the ammunition that was there went up, you know, hundred, hundreds of tons of, of of ammunition, rockets, and TNT basically went up is unlikely. It's much more likely that the missile, whatever it was, or what they call the drone, whatever it was, actually dropped the uh, the weapon or the, te the technology that produced that explosion. Well, that's my take on that one. And my take on the Jabbar one in Lebanon is the same, that the is Israelis are using the same weapon that they've used on Gaza, and that they did use on Gaza in, in, in 2009, and that they used on Lebanon in 2006, and that the Americans used on Fallujah in 2000, and whenever it was, three, and also in Iraq when they used it against the Iraqis at the, uh, at the airport. So this is my message and this is my res response to the many people who have questioned me about what I think, and this is what I think, remember, I might be wrong, it's quite possible that I'm wrong and that there's some explanation. I don't take the explanation that it's a thermobaric explosion in Lebanon and then some other explosion of an, of an ammunition dump in Torre Pets. It looks to me like exactly the same weapon. So what do we do about this? What can we do about it? Well, one thing is that we can register is that you can have a nuclear war, you can have exchange of, of these, in, these, these weapons which produce neutrons and produce uranium dust. We, can have, uh, we have to realize that these weapons are very dangerous and they are being used. And I believe that there were a load of these weapons stored in Ukraine at Khmelnytsky, uh, and I, I said that, that that was another big explosion, you remember, in 2023, I think it was. Um, and we tracked that stuff using the computer, computer tracking system and uh, eventually it ended up in England. And we measured the, the uranium in England. It's, and a big peak of uranium suddenly appeared in England after that, that, weapon, after that weapons dump in Khmelnytsky exploded. So eventually it will be tracked down. Eventually we'll find all this stuff. It will be in the air filters and people will see it. The residue from this material is enriched uranium. And the proximity of the explosion for a while is radioactive, um, but not hugely radioactive, but certainly detectably radioactive, about 50 times background. That sort of thing. And we measured it in Kiam in Lebanon in 2006. So the, 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 the bomb craters will be radioactive and anyone with a Geiger counter that goes there will, will detect it. So, you, so it can be investigated, but I can't investigate it because I'm not going there and I wouldn't go there if I could. No. So somebody can. And somebody can, can, can obtain samples from those craters and send them to us. Um, and uh, we will analyse them. We will, we will get a laboratory to analyse them. So the downstream effects, what are they? Well, they result from the neutron exposure, so people will die from mysterious diseases. They result from the exposure to the uranium, residue, residual re uranium dust, which gets inhaled and into the body, so you will have all the same effects that you had in Fallujah. So there will be genetic damage, there will be children with, with um, malformations, birth defects, 
there will be a huge increase in cancer, like there was in Serbia. In fact, I'm talking to some Serbian people now about the increases in cancer that they had after the United States bombing of Serbia during the Balkan Wars. Um, so there will be a downstream effects in terms of health, and that will go on and on and on. But what we have to realise is that there is a new weapon out there, and it is being used, and it will be used in future. So what, what else can I say? If you live anywhere near these areas, or even if you don't, if you, because this is going to get worse. I mean, you can, anybody looking at the world at the moment will see what's coming. What's coming is some either lesser or greater nuclear, nuclear exchange. And don't be fooled into thinking that these things are not dangerous. They're very dangerous. So buy yourself a Geiger counter. That's, that's my advice to you. And recognize that, that it's a very dangerous situation and that these weapons are being used, in my opinion. We will no doubt find out later there will be evidence that this will happen and everyone will say, oh, you were right. But at the moment, what will happen is everyone will say, oh, it's Chris Busby, it's false information, it's fake news, da di da di da But there we are. People do believe me and they've asked me for my opinion and that's it. So, thank you for listening to me and good luck.